So then once we have been able to work with the campaign, with, with the candidate and get them so they can communicate well with voters, then we have to run the effective campaigns to get them elected. Uh, we had some interesting races in this last one where several candidates ran in the race and, uh, uh, and they had different variables going on like money and number of, number of uh, volunteers and number of mailings. We know now, without a doubt, that the most effective way to run a campaign is with boots on the ground, and the most important person to go knock on doors is the candidate themselves. But by far, and by far, the effect of going out and talking to candidates or to to, uh, to voters is the most effective way to get people to vote for them. Uh, and we have the skills and the knowledge to run the. Uh, the walking lists and set up the maps and identify the voters and take care of all that stuff uh, and put it together into an effective plan. Um, uh, we need to then get out the vote. So once you've done all the work in, in getting up to election day, uh, we know how to get out the vote and make sure that all the people we've identified uh, cast our ballots and, and get our people elected. There's nothing like losing some elections to learn. <laughs> That's what the Tea Party did, right? Yes. So on the timeline slide, this is what I propose in terms of timelines on how we work together. So we're roughly at the middle of uh, June. So uh, we will take between now and the end of July to, to uh, strategize. And that is develop our criteria for selecting candidates and offices to run for uh, and that would identify where we were in the state we would be working. And then that gives us the balance of the year. So up until about Thanksgiving, we conduct the candidate search. And this is doing what I said earlier, which is going out, looking at all the people in lower elected offices, asking them if they're interested in running for higher office, uh, scouring the boards, the appointed boards and the elected boards, uh, seeing who's, who's ready to move up, who's, you know, who's, who's got a taste for civic civic service and, and wants to do more of it, um, find the candidates to run. And then if we are able to do that, then we could spend the beginning of 2019 uh, in the candidate training. So making sure that they understand what their messages are, what the, what the issues are that are most important to the, uh, to the voters. And then, you know, they can watch what's going on in the legislature. Um, uh, and then that, when we get into the, the mid-year of 2019, then we begin the, the actual pre-campaign work, which is starting to make those connections, working on the endorsements, uh, raising money for the candidate, getting the candidate's name out there well in advance so that uh, when it comes to the filing, people are already familiar with the candidate. Um, one of the things that hindered us in this last election was it's some of the candidates were elected in the last week before the filing, which is a near impossible position to run a campaign. Uh, and then when we get to 2020, uh, the primary election then runs from January through uh, mid-May. And then just like this year, from uh, mid-May through November is the general election. So that's the general timeline that we would like to follow. Um, so <laughs> we'll be setting up meetings and focusing on these different areas as we trace through the next two years. And, and everybody just just I'm laughing. First of all, hey, Jeffrey Pearson and expanding electrons. Good to see you. There's a dance troupe or something above Larry. That's what you guys are hearing the, the pounding going on. So that's that's what it is. Seriously. Um, <laughs> it's, it's it's angry protesters. No, um, uh, I just wanted to, to comment on the, the timeline there. That's a long time. And so if the, and the first piece of that really was to kind of organize Man, that is so loud. <laughs> it's, to, it's, it's a very sensitive mic. It's to, it's to, it's to, uh, the first piece of that is to organize, like, who, who do we need to go after, right? But then finding candidates really is the next step because we have more than a year that we have to, it's really training and name recognition, right? It's really what it comes down to. Yep. That's a long time. I mean, and you think about it, what we did with 2018, nobody started that early finding candidates. And then when they did, it was scattered, so... Um, it's a good thing we're starting now. And who was finding candidates anyway? I mean, all the activity I saw was around endorsements, which is, you know, blessing people who have already 
been selected. So uh, we didn't even have a, a choice in, in the search. We need to get in front of the process so that we are finding the people that we are excited about ex uh, supporting. Yeah. Hi, Suzanne. Um, nice to nice to meet you, uh, Messick. Um, I'm the dude with the headphones. My name is John Ellis, and I'm actually a card carrying Dem. This is Larry Taylor. He's the chair of the Clatsop uh, Clatsop Dems, and uh, you know we're we're talking about working within the Dem party, but obviously it's about the issues and about the individuals, not the party. Right. So uh, and, and a lot of our audience, I don't know, welcome, but a lot of our audience are Greens and, and uh, uh, you know, Bernie supporters and other things. So that's that's the conversation. But we're all here about the issues, I would hope. So welcome. Welcome to the conversation. Uh, this dude. I like that. <laughs> yeah, real jingy. Anyway, uh, what's next, Larry? So uh, uh for all the people who listen to this, there's a, it's a pretty simple process to get involved. Uh, go to the website called advancementofdemocracy.org and uh, put in your name. Uh, and if you are uh, joining us from another organization uh, and you want us all to work together, you have a spot to indicate what organization you're linking us up with so that we can start building this uh, network of people working together uh, uh, going forward. Uh, and then once you've signed up, we will get you slotted into the strategy conversations uh, because I'm, I'm a huge believer in group intelligence. A group of people can always do better than a person thinking single. Um, and then we would really appreciate everyone getting involved and actively searching for candidates. It's, it's thankless work, but it is so great when you find a good one uh, and uh, they say yes and they're willing to go along for the ride. Yes. Um, and then I encourage other groups to participate. You know, stop the, the, uh, the, the working alone because only by working together can we succeed. The amount of money against us and what we want to do is enormous. Uh, we saw this in this, this last election, just jaw dropping amounts of money dropped into races, you know, six figure races for to win a primary campaign. Um, but you can overcome money with boots on the ground. It is all about making the connection with the electorate and having that conversation. Uh, and you will be amazed at how many people will cross party lines and vote for you just because you've reached out to them. I think I agree with you mostly. I think you can, <laughs> you can win with boots on the ground as long as you have a decent campaign video and know how to work with social media because so what we yes and so what we bring to the table are all the resources of uphill media right and then we have people with uh, extensive backgrounds in campaigns uh i'm from clatsop county where uh until this last election we had won 11 out of 11 county commissioners seats and we changed the course of history we stopped the lng terminal in clatsop county from going in because that was the only way we could do it is by actually replacing people in office they ignored the people when they testified year after year and until we took three out of five of them out and had a working majority, would, could we change what was going on? So at this point, all that's left is Jordan Cove uh, and we're working on getting that one stopped. Yeah, and Suzanne, it's nice to have you here. She said, hi, Larry, by the way. Um, uh, and group intelligence kind of depends on the makeup of the group, but a sweet thought nonetheless. Yes, agreed. agreed. <laughs> Um, it's well, we're all very bright, so I don't have a yeah, concern. well put, except Wall Street uh, timber overlords. Yes, we have to deal with that as well. Uh, and I, just on who I am, so I just real quick, I'm the technology guy. This media network isn't a normal network. It runs differently. I started Bernie 2016 TV back in 2015, and we're... One of the reasons, well, we pissed off CNN a lot. But the point is, we've got a lot of technology to really help our candidates. And I'd like to bring that technology to our candidates. And in order to do that, we need to work together. And we need our candidates to, to be better champions in 2020. All right? We learned some lessons in 2018. We've got all the resources between all the different groups to really do this. So that's, that's who I am, and that's what we're doing here. And I, I, I'm sorry, Susan. Totally get it. Her name is Susan, but it looks like it's pronounced Suzanne because it's got a Z in it. But that's just cool. Anyway, that's who I am. That's what we're doing. 
We're just an independent media group trying to organize uh, the revolution here uh, around getting some progressives into power in, in Oregon. Through education. Through education, yeah. And so, you know, we're going to, hopefully, you know, what we're working on is, is you know, the, all the resources, media resources that our candidates are going to need. Larry, we're going to build out a visual board of, you know, the map of, of who, who, what we're going after, who we're targeting, and, and that stuff that we, we need this. This this is what we need. It's, it's real campaign stuff. Time to, time to get real. Right? So... So uh, showing the slide how to get involved. So that's what the home screen looks like for advancement of democracy. All you do is click on the join button, fill it out, and then uh, we will have your contact information. Uh, just so you know, there's, uh, there's a total of five programs that advancement of democracy is working on. One of them is a studying of, of democracy and parliamentary procedure. So when we get into these meetings, uh, we know what our rights are and we can hold our own. Uh, we will be doing uh, legislation. Uh, we have not started that, but that's the next uh, segment to kick off. Uh, we've already had insight into what the legislature thinks their top issues are. They don't quite align with what came out of the Democratic Party platform. And so that's what we need to do is think about how we want to approach that. Uh, because the legislation for the next session in uh, 2019 is being written right now. And by the time we get to the elections, um, which is pretty much a coronation at this point, the legislation will be, there will be already legislation submitted in the hopper and the leaders of the legislature already know what, what pieces they're gonna move forward with. So uh, we are not at all early in this process. If anything, we are starting late. Yes. So yeah, so when you sign up, you can indicate which of the uh, areas that you are interested in working on and we will get you involved. And, and listen, advancement of democracy is just a it's just a list to help us, you know, it's Larry's organization, but it's really we're just trying to get a list of the people that we need to call to these meetings and, and, and get involved with this. Right. So and, and, and so please do that if you can. Uh, Susan, yes, Larry Taylor, right, we mentioned at the beginning of the show and, and, and I did a little earlier. Um, and he's the chair of the, the Clatsop Dems, as well as a number of other things. He's just a big, crazy activist guy in Oregon that describe you larry pretty much yeah sure okay <laughs> he's, he's like a grand wizard of um uh parliamentary procedure and robert's rules of order and uh so which is powerful stuff so it's important so, thank you guys for being here what else do we need to cover hi sarah uh, sarah spansale is here hi sarah hi jay pearson <laughs> nice to see you Thank you all. Wow. Yeah, and just so you know, Sarah is from Jackson County. So that's just an example of where we have contacts from all over the state. We have we have friends in Deschutes County. We have friends in Wallowa County. We have contacts in Baker County, uh, Harney County. The, uh, this, the last thing this organization is, is a Portland Metro group. I myself am based in Astoria, and John is based in Corvallis. Uh, but what we want to do is for everyone across the state to work. Yeah, I mean, that's what this, uh, we're offering, we're trying to facilitate that as a hub, because we really just need to work together. Hey, Joe G, how you doing? Hey, Betsy. Betsy Cunningham in the, in the chat, Larry. Hey, Betsy. So, so that's basically it. This is the first one, just we'll cut it up into smaller segments, but really this was just to kind of give an overview of what we need to do and the steps that we need to take. Um, reach out to us, info at uphillmedia.org. If you want to get involved, um, I know we, I've got Steve B here in the Zoom production room with us. If you want to be part of the live discussion in this room, you can. It involves a little training, and we we'd like to bring in different activists and leaders and people to have parts of discussion. What we need to do is is work with you ahead of time. You know, this is a show; it is produced, and there is content that is created way ahead of time to make sure we know what the hell we're talking about. We'd love to have other people involved with that because this is a planning. That's what this. That's all we're trying to do is just get everybody together. Let's all talk, you know. So um, thank you for being here. Please share this with progressive leadership or other uh, individuals out there that you want to share it with. Um, and if you know of something going on in progressive movement right now, and and yes, Susan, just to clarify, we're, we are talking about 2020. We are not talking about what's going on right now with candidates running in 2018. We're we're beyond that. I just wanted to to hit that for you, right? So it. Please share this. 
we just all need to have a conversation. We need to get together because we have the power to win. We just, we just need to work together, honestly. So, Larry, anything else, my friend? Nope. Thank you, everyone. Lemony Merkley for president. It's an interesting idea. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think of Merkley? I think he's a good guy. He's a very good guy. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can have him on. I'd love to talk to him. Um, tradition on this channel started way back with Bernie 2016 TV and continues to this day is to go out with song. I don't have a song. What I actually have is um, just a, a little Twitter clip um, video. As I thought this was better, we're going to go out with this because Occupy ICE PDX shut down the ICE uh, facility in Portland today. And that it, uh, Occupy ICE has gone national. There are uh, groups setting up everywhere. And I, I just want to say that this is really cool because I remember when Occupy, the first movement, happened and everybody said it was a failure. It didn't accomplish anything. It didn't do anything. Well, we sure learned from it. And it did do a lot. But I don't think we recognized the power of what it was. I saw that today. And I want you to watch this video and think about this. When enough of us get together, we are unstoppable. Because we just shut down an ICE office. And we did it without violence. Nobody got arrested. But we shamed every one of them. We made that place uninhabitable for them. And we can do that wherever they go. All right. And that's, that's part of being together. That's part of the power of unity. We have that same power if we get our shit together right now for 2020 in Oregon. All right. So thank you all for being here. Watch this video real quick. So the main purpose of this vigil, why we started, is to demand an end to the zero tolerance policy. Because in Portland, we have a zero tolerance for ICE bullshit. Yeah. So uh, people have decided to come out to the ICE uh, facility here in Portland and occupy until uh, the kids are reunited with their families. I personally am undocumented and it's something that, you know, growing up I had to deal with, I had to live with, and not too long ago I decided to take a stand. We need more than just holding signs because they're not going to read them. If they don't listen to us, they're not going to read your signs. Put your body on the line. They don't listen, escalate. Because sitting down, we're not going to fix anything. If you're white, uh, don't be just a passive ally. Uh, make it sure that it's not just a like on Facebook, but instead you are putting your, your body on the line. You're coming out here, you're participating um, because y'all get to go home and you know we get to see our families and whatnot. Uh, I don't, I get to go home and then I have to worry about waking up and seeing advices outside. Uh, and it's not a good way to live that. So people that do have uh, privilege, make sure that you use it wisely. Um, but yeah, if you have a detention center in your area, occupy it, let them know they're not welcome.